my friends, welcome back. Today we're talking about the shear stress strain diagram. We talked about the stress strain diagram last time. This is the shear stress strain diagram. It's very, very similar, except it has a uh, different axes on it, right? This time on this axis we have tau, which is shear stress, and over here we have shear strain. Remember, what is that? Dead fish, right? That is um, this equation here, okay? Remember, it was pi over 2, 90 degrees, minus that deformed angle. Remember we talked last time about my little slinky, that when it's deformed, like so, right? That 90 degree angle, which used to be like that, right? There's a 90 degree angle, and then once I push on it, it gets deformed to something less than 90 degrees. And so, 90 degrees minus that new angle, theta, right? That's angle theta, right? Here's new angle theta, uh, gives you the shear strain. So it's the amount of deformation, right? It's deformation. So this is very similar, okay? And it's also very similar in that it has a linear portion of the line. And that linear portion of, now how does this, where'd this graph come from, right? The last one I gave, remember I gave my silly putty example but for the last one, for uh, the dog bone samples, the tensile testing, you know, where, those, where that other graph comes from, where does this one come from? Well, actually, it comes from this, okay? So here is, this is not, they do not test it with slinkies, okay? This is a slinky, okay? But imagine this is just a, a thin, hollow metal tube, okay? And they take this metal tube, and what they do is they clamp it on both ends, and then they start to twist it, okay? Now, obviously, as I twist my slinky, we've talked about this before, those layers are sliding across each other. A solid metal tube shears the same way. It doesn't have those layers. It doesn't shear as easy as that. You can't just twist a metal tube as easy as I can twist my slinky. But you can imagine that deformation the same way. So they measure angle of twist. So as I start twisting on this, it starts deforming into an angle, right? Again, if I put a, a line down the end of my slinky there, I didn't get that on there very straight. That's not too bad. And I start to twist that, right? I start getting this angle of twist. That one line that used to be straight is now not straight, okay? And as I twist that, right, as I let it go, it bounces back, right? So that is this elastic part of the curve. So it has an elastic property in torsion as well as it does in tension, okay? And this... Just like before, we can use Hooke's Law and, and, or Young's Modulus, and we use this by, this is called G, okay, which is called the shear modulus of elasticity or the shear modulus of rigidity. Either one of those, you'll see it called either one of these. They're the same thing, okay? So G, capital G, yo, what's up, G? G looks just like it did when we figured E, right? Remember this guy, okay? So just when we figured him, G's the same. It's the slope of that line. It's rise, tau, over run, gamma there, right? And let's see, what is, what is this in? What is shear strain in? Shear strain was in radians. Remember, it was in radians, and radians is a unitless thing. So the, the modulus of a, uh, the shear modulus elasticity is going to have the same units as tau, which is either psi, ksi, pascals, or megapascals, or you could have gigapascals, right? So it's going to have the same units as tau. Now, one of the things, I have an equation up here, also this equation right here. So where did that come from? G is equal to E divided by um, 2 times 1 plus nu, okay? What is nu? That's Poisson's ratio. Remember Poisson's ratio, the stay push puff marshmallow rule, right? So this is another equation to calculate G. Now, G... The shear modulus elasticity 
is a value that you can look up in the back of the book. So you go to your material properties and you can read off what G is for A36 steel, what is it for aluminum, and so on and so forth, okay? So you can look that value up, or we can calculate it if we know the modulus of elasticity and we know Poisson's ratio. There's another way to calculate it. And we prove how to do this a little later on in the book. It's in like chapter 10, but um, there's another equation for G. So another thing we can put in our toolbox over here so we've got just the uh, Young's modulus here, or we've got um, uh, this equation here also for G. Okay, so what else on this do we have? Okay, so also just like this, so this is what we call um, yield, or we call it uh, a proportional limit, right? This is the proportional limit. Okay, and that's the point at which when I start twisting my slinky here, that I twist it so far, now when I let it go, it doesn't go back to where it started from, right? So that's when I have some yielding going on and I have permanent deformation due to shear, right? So this is, this is shear, not just stress, okay? Uh, up here, same thing I have up here. I have tau ultimate. So this is the ultimate I can't even spell that. Ultimate um, shear stress. Okay, and then of course here, just like we had before, fracture. So you might see some things for if you're talking about shear, you don't you don't use typically you don't use E the modulus elasticity. You use G the shear modulus elasticity. And we will definitely use this in the next chapter. Uh, we'll use this in chapter five when we start talking about torsion. We start talking about twisting things. Um, this is going to come into play big time. And it's important to know like where these things come from and how this graph is derived. You know, it's, it's empirically observed by experimentation, just like the one was for the stress strain diagram. So I hope that kind of clears up like, what the shear stress strain diagram is and what it means. Now also, right, same thing, you have, over here you have strain hardening, just like you did before. This is the elastic region. And we call all this region over here the plastic region, okay, just like we did in the other, other diagram. Now that doesn't mean that your metal beam turns into plastic. Plastic just means that it uh, is not elastic, right? It means it's, it's deforming. That's all that means. So, okay, so this is a quickie video. Uh, I hope that this kind of clears up what the shear stress strain diagram is and kind of where it comes from. And uh, we will definitely be using this and this when we get to chapter five, okay? Thanks.